you found the Sharks Broadcast Podcast. Subscribe. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star rating. Picture her in some mansion somewhere, just like plotting her next uh, her next event to take over the world. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Reinventing herself again. Yes, once again. Yes. Did she, did, how old is Madonna? Do she must, know? she must be in her, 60 yeah. Something. I, nah, that's a good question. How old I, is Madonna? She's 62. Okay, wow. Yeah, I would have guessed like 58, 59, 62. Huh? Yeah. So I wonder what she's doing. Anyway, that's what goes through my head whenever mm-hmm. I hear it. And she's upset about it. She's upset that she's not. That's the other thing that goes through my head. She's like pacing and upset uh-huh. that she's not taking over the world. Right oh, now. yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's I, what happened during the pandemic. She was like all upset. Oh, man. She was in a was she she was in a <laughs> the bathtub, ba- bathtub, bathtub full of co- cocoa pebbles or something. <laughs> Fruity Pebbles, remember that? Yeah, she was just talking. I don't know. She, I was worried about her, but uh, you know, she seems to be seems to be back. So I was. Yeah. I've never worried about Madonna. Yeah. She's always like everything she does on camera. She does purposefully. Okay, you know that, that had me convinced. Then I oh. thought she. I thought she may have reinvented herself for the final time <laughs> <laughs> on that one. Yeah. No. No. She was talking about. Uh, I don't even know what. Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember saying. Wasn't wow. she making up a song in her bathtub? Like that could have been. They're it. not wearing their masks. Oh, yeah, or something, something like you know? that. Yeah, she was definitely in like a, a. Yeah, it was like a bathtub full of of uh, fruity pebbles. <laughs> it was it was a little frightening. Was she? Is she still a uh, practicing uh, Kabbalist? Yeah, with, remember she was. Yeah, she she was the first one to have the red uh, bracelet. Henna? The, the red bracelet. Yeah. Oh. Is yep. that like a signal that yes, she's that's a, into a Kabbalah, Kabbalah bracelet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Which well, you know, I, I, if you if you practice uh, the Kabbalah, you know, let us know what that means. Yeah, the, I'm the, not sure. Maybe it just yeah. means that you're in the club or something. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so listen, coming up, we're going to be t- giving you an update on River Dave. If you've been following the story, uh, he had a cabin in Canterbury, and we've got an update on his situation coming up. The Goo Goo Dolls also on the way in the shark. Uh, speaking of deep, um, it's a shark morning show with Sarah and A-Train. You may remember us talking about 81-year-old River Dave. His real name is uh, Dave. David Lins, uh, Linstone, and he lives in Canterbury, or he did live in Canterbury. He was recently arrested because the owner of the property that he's been living on for the past 27 years uh, wants to wants him off the property. And he's been living there, and he said he disputes it. He says that he owns the property. He has been living as if he owns the property. He farms there. People know him as River Dave because he lives right on the edge of the Merrimack River there in Canterbury. And, um, yeah, so he was sent to jail and he refused to go back to his property and, uh, if, you know, and leave and pick up his things and leave. So th- I guess there was a hearing. You have the update on River Dave? Yeah, they, the thing is, um, it was the saddest turn of events yesterday and, uh, they, his house was burnt to the ground. You know, the place he's been living for the last 27 years completely decimated, uh, by fire and, uh, the, the right after the hearing. Yeah. It was, it was, I think. The way I heard it was like, well, he has no place to go back to, so we can, uh, you know, re- relieve him and, and let him out of jail. Uh, that, that it was like almost like a chicken and the egg thing, where it's like his uh, house was burned, so they they said, well, yeah, there's the reason he's in here no longer exists, so they're going to allow him, I guess, to go and uh, get you know whatever's remaining but of that. But there's it's just nothing, nothing left. left. There's like twelve cinder blocks and ash. It's the saddest thing ever. It really is. I wake up. This morning, and the first thing I see on TV is uh, him. He looks like the happiest man I've ever seen. He's with uh, one of his supporters, Mm -hmm. and uh, he is just fighting the good fight as he always does. He says he wants to rebuild on the same site as long as I'm not arrested again. And to talk about his home being burnt down, he goes, "Ah, it's all physical stuff. You know, it's what you have in friends' accounts. I'm happier than any." Than any billionaire. So, uh, oh my yeah. God, he did. I, yeah, I, oh. I, I just, uh, yesterday I heard all this, you know, it was almost like simultaneous that his, uh, they discovered that his, his house was burnt to the ground. So there was no reason for him to be in jail anymore because mm-hmm. where he was didn't exist. And then now he's, I mean, he looks yeah. happier than I've ever seen him. Well, right I guess now. that people are not only giving him money, they're also offering, uh, cabins for him to live in on their land. 
Oh, yeah. I, I got to think, you know, uh, he's so stubborn. <laughs> he's such a fighter. But I got to think, you at some point he'll go, wow. I mean, this is this is a sweet spread over here and they're perfectly <laughs> cool with it, you know, but he's, he's such a, a fighter that uh, he's he's just kind of a little fixated on that land. But, you know, whatever. When you're a fighter, you're a fighter. And that's what I'm thinking. You know, all the beautiful tiny homes things that they have now that he could uh, live on and he loves to live off the land. So he I, does. I he, think I think he'll be OK. Oh, I'm sure he's going to be OK. Okay, but the, okay, so I, I am extremely sad. I mean, he's 81 years yeah. old, for goodness sake. The guy who owns the land is 87 and <sighs> lives in Vermont. I mean, couldn't you wait a few years? You know what I mean? Yeah. Couldn't you just wait it out? The guy's been living there for 27 years. Yeah, 27 years oh. and, uh, you know, never, uh, I mean, you know, for 27 years, he's never hurting anybody. He's just there. Yeah, but uh, but the real estate, you know, real mm, yeah. estate Sarah, right? It is the owner's land. They, yep. If you are renting a property, you can do whatever you want with it. Except now because there is a moratorium on evictions, but that's a completely different subject that you can read more about on the Shark app. <laughs> but, um, oh. and the other, the, you know, the other thing about River Dave, Dave, just go to another property, you know, go to another property and live on somebody else's land. Yeah. Who there's, want you there, you know? Yeah, there's the, exactly. The, he's got many offers. So yeah. I think, you know, I think after things calm down, we'll, mm. we'll see him probably living happily ever after. I one would of those. say so. Yeah. I would say so. It's this whole situation is very similar to a 1990 Irish film called The Field. If you haven't seen it. It stars Richard Harris. Is It is extremely heavy. It's very dramatic and a very heavy film. Uh, but it's very, very similar to what's going on now in Canterbury. So there's your weekend suggestion as you're hanging out in your air conditioning. A Flock of Seagulls coming up next on The Shark. Here's what's trending on SeacoastCurrent.com. Straight up at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a hot weekend. We'll have all the details coming up in the forecast. Here's what's happening. The CDC COVID-19 transmission map puts the seacoast at a significant level. An FBI spokesperson says that the public is safe after a bomb scare. And the dog park debacle video featuring a Portsmouth city attorney. It's pretty funny. Check it out right there. Download the Seacoast Current app for details on those stories and more. Be current. Stay current at SeacoastCurrent.com. Shark sports and weather coming up next. See and Larry had a good time at Shark in the Park the other day. I'm telling you, you know, there's so much entertainment at Shark in the Park. <laughs> uh, you know, Aunt Peg did such a great job uh, yep. performing for hours and hours. But, uh, you know, the crowd at Shark in the Park is uh, almost equally as entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about your parents, Train. <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah, they, they were looking around and just enjoying how much the crowd at Shark of the Park was enjoying the music. Oh, yeah. There's I'm a, telling you. A it's lot a, of dancing. It is a good time. And yeah. this coming Wednesday, we're going to have another Shark in the Park. It's going to be outside. Yeah. Wellfleet is going to be the band. You will never hear a harmonica play the harmonica quite like the band in Wellfleet, the yeah. guy that plays. Oh, unbelievable. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, it's time now for the Brain Strain. We've got tickets, tickets, tickets for you. Yeah, this is the uh, Thursday night show of One Night of Queen, Thursday, August 12th, coming right up at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. And uh, this is a kind of a funny one, kind of a fun one, but uh, th that's your hint, because 50% of New Englanders keep this in the car at all times. You wouldn't expect that they would, but uh, 50% of New Englanders <laughs> keep this in the car mm -hmm. at all times. What's the this? What are we talking about? I think it's one of the smartest things that you can keep in the car, if you ask me. <laughs> It's a just in case kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fleetwood Mac coming up. And if you get the answer that we're looking for, you get the tickets. 877 Shark. That's 877 457 Good luck. I hear that tune. 725. It's a Shark Morning Show with Sarah and A Train. Yeah, we got the brain strain rocking on your Friday, and everybody wants to see One Night of Queen. Uh, two shows right there at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. We are giving away Thursday night. Thursday night. Yeah, August 12th. <laughs> right there on Ocean Boulevard. And uh, this is kind of a fun one, funny one. I don't know. We've got 50% uh, of New Englanders. They keep, I guess maybe if you need it, it won't be funny. But 50% of New Englanders keep this in the car at all times. What are we talking about? 877-45-SHARK. Good morning. What is your guess? Uh, is it roadside emergency kit? 
No, it's not a roadside emergency kit. No, but this thing could be part of it. You mm-hmm. could, like, consider this an emergency thing. So try again. Wait, so I got it partly raised? Does that <laughs> well, mean I get, like, one ticket or a half a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> First aid kit. <laughs> no. No. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to guess a change of clothes. No, no it's but not a change again, of clothes. Again, yeah. this kind of has to do with this thing. Because if you didn't have this okay. thing, you might need a change of clothes. Yeah. Good morning, the shark. What's your guess? I, I think it's toilet paper. Oh, Whoa. yeah, it is. Toilet oh, paper. Oh, nice work. What's your name? Tracy Shavor. Hey, Tracy, where are you calling from? What town? Um, Farmington. Congratulations. Yes, toilet paper, TP. There we go. Yeah, is that like in the glove box, in the center console, like out in the trunk? Where where, where do you store that? Well, you know, it can just, just be rolling around in the back seat like okay. so many other things in okay. my car. Oh, you know. okay. Just, just a I random. I would suggest you know. that everybody have toilet paper in their mm-hmm. car just because you never know. I'm trying to think. I remember that like on long, long camping road trips. You know, you go up north of nowhere yeah. and uh, you, you would need that situation because there's no, uh, you know, restaurants with bathrooms or something yeah, the rest right, areas right. they're all all out in the nature <laughs> so uh i could see that yeah, yeah absolutely but at all times i guess that, that's interesting yeah, sure. just in case yeah. just in case my mm-hmm. mother god rest her soul she used to have you have to have toilet paper all the time you know because the kid not only because the kids but you know just in case there was ever a situation always good to be prepared yeah yeah exactly we got kenny loggins and the doobie brothers coming up on the shark the owls i got my life preserver on for this uh, episode of forest ranger train Okay. Very exciting. Uh, off the coast of Seabrook, a pair of humpback whales have been uh, consistently spotted all around uh, Seabrook. So there's sure a enough, family living there. That's yeah, awesome. Male and female. Uh, they're they're huge. You know, they uh, grow up to 50 feet. The females actually are 52 feet. Uh, the males are 46 feet. And uh, they're kind of a triple threat for talent as far as uh, what they can bring to your Because they say the males sing. You know, they Aww. try to, try to uh, you know, uh, excite the ladies with their singing voices. Oh, just like the peacocks do with their feathers. Uh huh. The whales do with their voice. You know, That's it's beautiful. It's tough. You really got to work. You got to work for it. And uh, <laughs> they also the, the another one thing that they do and uh, they breach. You know, that's humpback whales will commonly just pop out of the water. Uh, you know, almost their entire body and just do that backflip thing. Have you ever seen that in person? I, no, I've Me never either. seen it. Yeah. If you've seen it with your own eyes, consider yourself blessed. That is just wow. I would love to see that. Yeah, there's. So uh, unaggressive, you know, the people will be out there with like their long boards and stuff and just, you know, so give them their, their space. You know, you want mm-hmm. them to, uh, you want them to live, live free themselves. Right. And you don't want to be on the bad end of a breach. You know, you don't want to be, uh, have your, oh, have your long you right board or your yeah. kayak mm. <laughs> popped mid breach. You're not going to have a chance. Interest- They're much bigger. Uh, one, I'm going forest ranger train here. Interestingly enough, the original name of the humpback whale was the New Englander. Um, a Frenchman uh, explorer in the in the 1750s first came here and saw so many of them uh, here that he he called them the New Englander, which You're you know, it, yeah, it was pretty cool. In French, it was like La Baleine de Nouvelle Angleterre, which is just in one long way of saying uh, the New Englander. But uh, almost to extinction in the 1960s, and they've come back and they're uh, least concerned for their uh, threat to conservation. So wonderful thing! I love the humpback whales, and they're right off the coast of Seabrook. You know, I got to call Ian at Pepper's landing in uh rachi to see if i can go out on a boat with them oh yeah you know i know we have whale watches right we've got whale mm-hmm. watches but I, it would be more fun to go out with like actual fishermen yeah yeah you know because they're working as they're sightseeing yeah i want to keep busy i want to like get right in there you know <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah I've, I've, see if i can help i've never seen uh i've, I've seen like a, one of those small is the right whale the small the, the yeah i've seen those but i've never seen a humpback do its flip thing i would love to see a humpback yeah, flip me too me too mm-hmm. all right thanks forest ranger train <laughs> even though you weren't in the forest just then I we know. get paul abdul coming up you're so happy to be telling you about the fairs that are coming back you and I love the fair. Do we not train? Absolutely. Oh. Uh, of course, you know, with with me, a lot of the focus is always on the food, but uh, I love the agriculture as well. When I, I think, do too. Think of the uh, Deerfield Fair. You know, that's a, a major, major giant pumpkin uh, contest. That's that is pretty much I would say for New Hampshire. You know, the uh, that is kind of the the fair for the mm. the giant pumpkins. I believe one of the highest rated uh, weighted pumpkins ever was there. The Granite State Fair is also coming back this year, September 16th 
through the 19th and the 23rd through the 26th. Now, formerly known as the Rochester Fair, uh, they've got all kinds of events that we know and love at the Granite State Fair coming up next month. It's going to be here before you know it. The school bus uh, demolition derby yeah. in the grandstand. The Midway, of course, has all the fun rides. There's the circus and the livestock exhibits, and of course, the fair food. So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean that of that fair. I mean, come on. When uh, I was a kid, I mean that was like what? When is Christmas going to be this year? <laughs> you know, the thing with Christmas, you always knew it was December twenty fifth. But as far as uh, what day in September that mm-hmm. uh, now the Granite State Fair is going to be? I mean, that was like one of the ultimate dates of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so great. I'm so happy that fair season is coming back. Mm-hmm. If in fact we, you know, don't have any uh, COVID. Spoiling all our fun, uh-huh. you know, because every time I hear another report about it, I'm like, oh, come uh, on. I know. Ah. Now, I think, uh, you know, much like the NFL did last year, right through, you know, a lot of it, I think a lot of people are just doing the best they can, you know, to uh, just make it safe and just go through with it. Just, you know, yeah. ha- have it happen. So, yeah, the horse is out of the gate, you know, with a lot of these things. So mm-hmm. we got to go for it. Yep. So, Jay Giles band on the shark. <laughs> Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion I was soaring ever higher But I flew too high Oh my eyes yeah, can see yeah. <laughs> I am so happy <laughs> South Park is going to be around for a long time Oh man, you know Randy Marsh and his uh, rendition of Carry On Wayward Son I think is very, very underrated Randy Marsh is that Cartman? No, that's uh, that's uh, Stan Marsh's father, who was just uh, playing his real guitar uh, to that song. Where back when they were playing Guitar Hero on oh, South Park. Okay, yeah, all it's right. Beautiful, beautiful, tear jerking <laughs> rendition. <laughs> it's a Shark Morning Show with Sarah and A Train. South Park just signed a deal with Comedy Central for nine hundred million dollars. That is almost a B billion. I, unbelievable, man! Oh. The money flying around that franchise. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of merchandising, you know, a lot of a lot of T-shirts, a lot of Cartman dolls. I mean, Honestly, Cartman's got some. Who doesn't like you know. Cartman <laughs> and South Park? I mean, opposites attract, right? So I've been a fan since the inception of South Park. My son and I used to watch it when he was little. You know, maybe you can question my parenting uh, choices if you want, but it was hilarious to us. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of good life lessons yes, in South Park. I think so, yeah. too. It's all about inclusion. And, you know, this is the real world that they talk about, you yeah, know? Absolutely. So South Park, I think, gave my son some ideas on how to, you know, uh, deal with some of his situations at school that <laughs> his mother had no clue about. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, really, really glad about that. And then yeah, in, in great stuff uh, to Today, he does train track celebrities. Clint Eastwood back again. Man, he is 91 and he's not slowing down a bit. No. Uh, he has a new movie coming out in September called Cry Macho. It is uh, kind of a postmodern western uh, with starring Dwight Yoakam, who plays a great bad guy. Ooh. He's amazing. Dwight Yoakam oh. is, is an amazing actor. Yeah. He he's really is. Really, he really makes you hate him in like one sentence. He's a really, really good bad guy. So uh, Clint has him. Uh, Clint, of course, plays a uh, an old rodeo star that has to uh, go to Mexico and get uh, the son of Dwight Yoakam's character. And uh, boy, it really looks, it looks terrific. Fantastic. Here's part of the trailer. Back when we had winners, I was afraid to lose you to the competition. Five times you won the All-American. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was before the accident. Before the booze. You know how many people told me to just cut you loose? You gonna say anything? Howard, I've always thought of you as a small, weak, and gutless man. But you know... There's no reason to be rude. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Directing and acting, unbelievable. Clint Eastwood, of course, uh, is on fire. 2018 with a mule. 2019 uh, underrated Richard Jewell did really well. This cry macho will hit theaters on September 17th. You also can get it on uh, HBO Max. He has never done a movie that I haven't cried at. Oh. Every one of them, yeah. you know, especially the last one. I think Million Dollar Baby, I bawled in the movie theater openly. Mm-hmm. I openly weeped 
yeah. at Million Dollar Baby. It's fun. And this one, it sounds like the same. Yeah, everybody that works oh. with him, everybody says uh, it is so open and free, and you just do your lines the way you want to do them. And he goes... That's great, and then and then he just that's it. It takes so it takes like no time to uh, record these because he loves everybody's uh, rendition of the of the lines. It's yeah, so, it's so funny. Ninety one. It's incredible. We've got uh, who are you coming up next on the shark with cricket? And sweeping the nation. Who are you? Try to guess the famous celebrities in just three clues or less. Everybody, put your hands together for your two hosts and your two players, Sarah and Atrey. Yuck, 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 yuck. Thank you, Johnny. Ow. Putting the awe in August uh, as we've got child stars that we know and love. That's been my theme this week. And this American actor, uh, born in 1980, he is 40 years of age, born in New York City, but made uh, his fame for playing a kid in Chicago. They, uh, all the guy, all the kid wanted was just a cheese pizza, just for himself, just a couple slices of cheese pizza, and he ends up having a fit, and he got punished, and he got sent up to the attic. Oh, and the rest is, is it, history. Uh, what's his face? The Home Alone kid, romantically linked to Mila Kunis from. Uh, 2002 to 2010, yes, it is the Home Alone kid. Uh, what's his face? You know. Mac. Yeah. Ma- Ma- uh, yeah, Macaulay Culkin. Ma- That's all I had to say. Ma- you got it. Macaulay Culkin. Oh, yeah. Okay. He turned, uh, he's going to turn 41 August 26th. Wow. Yeah. All right. Good one. Aw. That's it. The kid just wants. Yeah. Putting the awe in August. Kid just wants a, a cheese pizza, you know? Uh, my celebrity for today, it is her birthday today. And I'm going to say you're going to get this pretty easily. Uh, this this woman was, I'm going to say she was your favorite Spice Girl. Okay. Um, hmm. Was it um, Posh Spice? Nope. Okay. Uh, this was Spice it, uh, Girl was born in England. Um, let's see. 1972. What? It's going to be amazing if I can get her actual name because uh, yeah, I just know the spice name, but I do know a couple of names. Uh, is it Emma Bunton? No, oh. I mean if you get the if you get the correct spice, okay, then I'll give it to you. Okay, uh, we're headed into the fall, and this particular spice is quite popular. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, ginger spice. Ginger spice, ladies oh, and gentlemen. What is her name? I don't think I can get her name. Jerry Hallowell. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have got that one. All right. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jerry Hallowell. Yeah. She turns 49. I mean, old. she uh, was only 49. I remember her uh, posing with a very kind of flustered Prince Charles. It's one of the best uh, photo sessions ever. He met the Spice Girls, and she was she was quite uh, assertive. She was? <laughs> yeah. She was, she, was, she was like scarier than Scary Spice. That's the best story I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. I yeah. want to see I, video. Was, I love it when... <laughs> I don't know why he, I love he that. He was blushing. Oh, I just love yeah. that. She, I think she, she might have been, uh, you know, breaking some protocol rules. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> I like her more than I did 10 seconds ago. Uh, we got Bob Seeger, Prince on the way, and our Red Sox, our sports insider. Uh, maybe he can give us an update on uh, Jerry. Tom Karen coming up on The Shark. Time now for Tom Karen, our Boston sports insider. And Tom... We want to know how is Jerry Remy doing, and I'm sure you've talked to him, yeah. Uh, you know, he he's got the the great uh, attitude that you knew he would have. He's like, I'm ready for this. We're going to fight this. It's awful because he's been through so much, and it's happened so many times. Uh, 2008 was the first time uh, he's you know he's battled back uh, uh, multiple occurrences of it, uh, and, and now here we go again. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, not a lot we can do right now except uh, send him positive vibes and uh, and keep him in that thought. TC, I was reading your Twitter. It looks uh, like uh, Martin Perez. Ooh, that might be uh, kind of a backup <laughs> a backup bullpen role, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can't see how you keep him in the playoff race. Uh, the, you know, he, he's a good guy and he loves pitching here and mm-hmm. he, he does his best, but his best hasn't been good enough. Uh, Core almost came sprinting out of the bag out yesterday to pull him out in the second inning. Uh, with only one out on the board. You give up more hits than, than you record out. So that's not a good day. Uh, and, and you know, there's options. I mean, Chris Sale pitches tomorrow for the Woo Sox down in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, Tanner Houck's been really good. He's going to pitch tomorrow in the doubleheader for the Red Sox. So, I, you know, I think there's options, and I, I just think it's going to be tough to keep giving the Perez, uh, Perez the ball every fifth day. 
Yeah, I was wondering also, um, as far as uh, Fenway, the wear and tear on Fenway, I've never seen a week like this with all of the shows. How's that, how's everything going there? Like, I'm going to find the person who went who's going to go to every one of these shows. Uh, because <laughs> I just, I've never seen such a, uh, a wide range. I mean, we went from uh, uh, Guns N' Roses on, on Tuesday. Yep. To Billy Joel on Wednesday, to Green Bay and Weezer last night, yep. to New Kids on the Block and Bell Biv DeVoe tonight. Oh, it's going to be Zach out of Brown control. On Sunday. I mean, that's that's as wide a range as I've seen. It on, really on is. It Sunday really is. Concert schedule. My niece is actually my niece Pam is building the uh, has helped build the stages there at Fenway. Oh, She's neat. having a blast. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah my son's cool. my son's an usher there for he's in college. His summer job has been an usher, so he. He's working all these shows. It's oh, yeah. Terrible. Oh, wow. The people yeah. watching has been uh, off the charts. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know if you saw last week, Bell Biv DeVoe uh, was on the show, and they officially made Jim Rice and me, uh, they've been honorary members of the band. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that is well, amazing news. Big time now. <laughs> uh, Bell Biv DeVoe, Tom, and Jim. Yeah. Oh, my amazing. God. That's so, I mean, uh, seriously, Jim must be off the hook excited about that. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's Bell yeah, Biv DeVoe. Yeah, they, well, they were off the hook excited about meeting him. Yes. You know, the local guys that, uh, you know, they, they, uh, and actually, uh, Michael Bivens was great. He said, uh, you know, I, I sort of just asked him about Jim, and he went into a really kind of profound answer about how, you know, when he was a kid wearing the number 14 because Jim uh, was, was uh, such a great athlete and represented the African American community in, yep. in Boston and in some difficult times through the busing and all of that. Uh, so it really, uh, it was, it was great to hear, you know, and I think Jim was pretty happy to hear that, uh, he had some kind of effect on a, a young Bell Bib Oh, uh, that's cool. Uh. That's cool. So, uh, I leave you with a positive note. If the Red Sox continue to stink up the room, just, uh, yesterday I was watching the, interview that you had with a uh, big poppy i watched that last night with my husband and we're like fine if the red yeah. sox are gonna lose then we just gotta go back and remember how great it was with david ortiz <laughs> oh my god yeah, well let's uh, let's try not to live too far in the past let's <laughs> yeah. pull it out uh, but you know what is interesting about david ortiz we talked about the other day it's been five years. It was 2016. Uh, Started in five years, which means this off season he'll be eligible for the uh, Hall of Fame. Oh, it's going to be uh, yeah. really uh, fun to talk about. Wow, I'm sure he'll get it on the first go round. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. All right, TC. Well, thank you so much. You have a beautiful weekend, and we will talk to you next Friday. Thank you, guys. All Appreciate right. It. All right. You know what's funny about that? Mm -hmm. You can't say in my mind. You can't say Bell Biv DeVoe without saying. Now you know. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yeah. Every time Tom said, Bell Biv DeVoe, now you know. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of left out the point that uh, when I my one year of a Little League, Sarah, I wore number 14 as well. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, TC. <laughs> the Sharks Rock and Roll.